What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. So today we're going to be talking about upgrading our Z-axis. And this is one that comes from CNC for newbies. This is their Z-slider. And this came with some hardware. And I also went ahead and ordered a maintenance kit from Carbide 3D, which came with new belts, pulleys, V-wheels, some extra hardware, and these new eccentric nuts. But I also went and ordered some eccentric nuts from CNC Labs, and I'll touch more on that later. So we can get started by just removing everything. We'll get rid of all our dust collection, and we can get the router out of the way. And just set that off on, into the back. Uh, we'll pull this plate off here, and on the back of that is one of our limit switches. And you're just going to need a wrench and then an Allen key to get this off. And again, we'll just put those wires to the back once we get them disconnected. And make sure you're saving all this hardware that you take off because some of it is going to be reused. We can disconnect our X and our Z stepper motors. And then we can start removing this hardware here. This holds the limit switch for the x-axis. Again, hold on to that hardware. You're going to need that. And then we can go ahead and cut this little wire tie here in the back just to get those cables loose. And then we're going to take off this bracket here that actually holds that cable way on. And I forgot to mention, I've also disconnected the power to this thing completely. The router and the machine itself is completely unplugged. Um, we'll go ahead and get the springs off the Z-axis. Then we can loosen up that pulley down in the bottom. Um, and if you're trying to get this off, it's, it's probably easier once the whole thing is off. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm doing everything on the machine. So... Uh, the only way to get this off is to remove it from the top. So I've got to take those little spacers off and I can slide that right off. If you already have this whole thing off, um, you don't have to do that. You can just take it off on the bottom. We'll loosen up these eccentric nuts. And then we're going to take off the belt for the x-axis. And make sure you save that screw. Pull it all the way out. And then we can go ahead and start taking our motors off. You just want to make sure that those spacers stay with the X motor. Now we can take that other bracket off for the belt. If you weren't replacing your belt, you could leave that on there. I'm going to put a new one on, but we'll go ahead and remove these uh, pulleys here. We're going to reuse these. And these things get pretty dirty, so this is a good time to start cleaning stuff up. Go ahead and wipe all the, you know, stuff that comes off the belt and anything that you're cutting off of those. And now we're going to take these six screws out of the new Z slider. And we just have to be able to get to the back of it here. Um, and that's how we're going to remount those pulleys. And then we're also going to go ahead and mount the X axis motor. And this is just reusing all that factory hardware. And now we can put the rest of that axis back together. Just put these six screws in loose and then go ahead and once all six are in, go ahead and start tightening them down.
All right, now we need to get our actual spindle mount off. And we are not going to reuse those bolts. The CNC for Newbies kit came with some hardware and these two bolts here are, are some of the ones that it came with. So we don't need to crank this down right now. We're just gonna snug it up because we're gonna have to adjust it later. And here you can see the different eccentric nuts that I have. You got the original carbide 3D and the CNC labs. And the carbide one was actually too big uh, in diameter for that eccentric to fit through. Um, now the CNC labs was a little bit too long. So what I did is I just used a quarter inch washer and just make sure it, it fits good and isn't coming through. It came through just a hair and I just used a file to knock just a, a little bit of that off. So you don't want it coming through at all. We'll take our other V pulleys off. Now I'm replacing these, but I do need these washers here. And if you're paying attention here, you might notice that I put that first one together wrong. It should be the uh, V-pulley, then a washer, and then it would bolt on, uh, just like I'm setting this one up. So don't make that mistake, or else you'll have to go back and redo these. And you need that, that washer on these. Um, if two didn't have a washer, and then the top two did or something, this would not be sitting square to the axis. And I found it easier to put the bottom ones, the actual eccentric ones on first, and then just kind of hold it up here and put the top ones in, just because those actually thread right into this plate. So I wasn't having to fool around with like holding the eccentric. Um, you can go ahead and crank those ones down and now we need to go ahead and adjust those eccentrics. It's a real pain with these really long wrenches. Uh, you'd be better to get some shorter ones here that you can spin all the way around without hitting the wasteboard. Now we can go ahead and make sure there's no play there. Move it around, make sure it, it rolls good. And then I like to grab the wheels themselves and make sure that I'm not able to spin them. And now if you've watched my tramming video, you've probably seen me use this block. And I just use this to make sure that my bracket here is square to the wasteboard. And I loosen up both of those screws in the back, but then I kind of tighten one up just a little bit. And I press down on it until I've got it perfectly flat against that block. And then I go ahead and tighten these up. And you know, you can use like a one, two, three block. Uh, this is just something that I had around that just happens to have these two perfectly parallel faces on them. So it works well for this. And now we gotta get this pulley off of the motor. Um, and you wouldn't think this would be too hard. You get these two screws off and you may think that it would just come right out. Uh, but these are stuck on there pretty good. There's a little bit of adhesive, like a Loctite or something that they use on them. So I ended up making this tool. If you don't want to do that, you can just buy a uh, pulley remover and I'll go ahead and put a link in the description to one that should work. But you don't want to try to smash this off with a hammer. I have seen people put them in like vices and crush them to break it because it's just aluminum. Um, but you really want to be careful of that shaft. You don't want to damage that at all. And I'm just getting that excess uh, Loctite or whatever there was in there off because it was having a hard time going into that uh, connector at the top. And then you want to Tighten one of these down on the flat side that's on that motor. And you can just sort of snug it up to start. And then go ahead and put your four motor screws in and tighten them down good. And 
And this would probably be a little easier off the machine just because seeing these here is a little difficult. I actually ended up using uh, my GoPro, which you're watching from right now, but I can look at that screen on my phone and uh, that was helping me see where I needed to be. So you just want to make sure that you get those really tight. Just don't strip them out. So now we can go ahead and uh, in my case I'm putting a new belt on and you just run that through that bracket, tighten it on on this side and feeding this through was a real pain. You got to get it uh, under the one pulley and then you come and wrap around these pulleys here and then it'll go back down and you need to get it under this one also and I was just using an allen key to kind of help me guide it so just take your time with this it can be a little frustrating once you get it out just pull it all the way to the other end and again, put that little bracket on um, and check your manual on this. I forget what the gap that they recommended was. It might have been about a quarter of an inch or so, but I think you want these about guitar string tight, I believe they had said. So we'll tighten that up and then just check it, make sure it feels good. And as long as it's good, you can really crank it down. Now we'll start putting our limit switches on. And again, you needed to save that hardware there. So you've got that screw and those spacers. There's two of them. And just be careful that you're not like pinching these wires here. They kind of want to get in the way of the wires for the limit switch. Just make sure they stay out from under that bolt as you're tightening it down. Now you can put these little screws on. Again, those are just the factory hardware and that's going to hold this angle bracket, which is going to hold the cable way. Most of these tools that I'm using here are, are ones that came with the machine. Um, you will see me using some other Allens. Uh, Sometimes the Allens that they give you with the machine didn't seem to be that great a quality and they kind of feel like they're going to strip out. So a good Allen set is definitely worth it. Go ahead and connect your motors. You got the Z and then the X. And now we got to take care of this limit switch. So they give you a new one, um, but we've got to do just a little bit of wiring here. Just go ahead and strip these wires back and they give you the new connections. You're just gonna have to crimp them on. These are really small and uh, hopefully you have a lot of dexterity in your fingers so you can get these things on there. They're a little bit of a pain. It might've been a little easier just to go to the auto store and grab some new ones. Um, but I ended up getting them on. And now you've got a black and a yellow wire. The black one goes on the top and then you're going to use the middle one for the yellow. That bottom one does not get used, so don't worry about that. You can put your router back in and go ahead and tighten that down. And I just wanted to show you, you're adding some extra height here. We're at about 18 and a half inches. Um, so make sure if you have an enclosure it'll clear and as you can see at the bottom we've got about four inches of clearance well, Maybe just a hair less and now this part here is really important We need to make these adjustments so go in and click turn your machine on click connect to cutter But do not click initialize machine if you do it'll crash uh, Instead go to MDI and we need to input all of these settings here so you have the dollar sign three equals two, dollar sign 20 equals one, dollar sign 102 equals 200,
dollar sign 112 equals 2000 dollar sign 122 equals 750 and you're just hitting enter or you can click the send on these you have dollar sign 132 equals 150 and that's it now you can click run uh, there's a lot more adjustments that can be made to the machine with that MDI um, and I'm gonna make another video later going over that we'll be able to get this thing moving a little faster um, I just don't want to touch on it too heavy here just those are the settings that need to be adjusted so go ahead and initialize your machine it'll home out um, I tried using my brackets here for the dust collection and as you probably noticed it actually hit when I went to the back so I'll have to order the correct brackets from PWN CNC. But at this time you can go ahead and just jog your axis up and down. Make sure everything is moving smoothly, nothing's binding, nothing's making any funny noises. And then we can go ahead and start cutting something. Uh, I just made this oval. I wanted something kind of tall. This is an inch and a half tall. Um, and it's about I don't know, six by four inches, I think it was. And these are the actual speeds here. I'm running, I think this was about 300 inches per minute, which it's probably never achieving that because it's having to accelerate and decelerate so quick. Um, but this is a pretty good rate. And this is Poplar. It really wasn't machining that great. So after I had done my roughing and then my finish, I ended up doing another finish, which you're seeing here. I'm just barely removing any material. Um, and it's just cleaning off those little burrs that were left. But, you know, this just gives you a good idea of how the machine moves. It's got really nice, smooth movement. I bought this thing with my own money. And I think these are a great value. This kit was, at, at the time I'm recording this, it was about 330 bucks ship. It got here really quick. Uh, it came from Canada. And it got here in like five days, so I was really impressed with that. Uh, the just initial thought on it, um, quality looks really good, machining, everything like that looks great. And, you know, it does exactly what I wanted it to do. So it's a heavier duty axis. It's got the lead screw, um, so I'm not going to have to worry about a belt anymore. And it's also got a lot more travel in it, which is definitely a big plus. You got, I think, five or six inches on this one. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Big thank you to these guys here. That's the people that support me on Patreon. Really couldn't do it without you guys. And I'd really appreciate a like, share, and a comment on the video. That really helps me out. It just lets YouTube know that people like this, and it'll show it to more people. So that's all for now. I will see you guys over on this next video. They don't know.